Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to take a quick overview of .NET 5 and what it means specifically for the ASP.NET Core environment. So we're not going to be taking a look at Blazor, we're not going to be taking a look at Xamarin Forms, we're not going to be t uh, taking a look at .NET Framework, uh, God forbid. So long story short, not much has changed. If you're on .NET Core 3.1 right now, you can just upgrade to .NET and it will be business as usual for you. Otherwise, uh, let's go ahead and dig in into this a little bit. So uh, when people talk about like unified uh, platform, whatever, like what has actually been unified and if you don't understand that part, it's basically how you had a different runtime for .NET Framework where it was sort of just Windows, where you had .NET Core, where it was cross-platform and then you had Xamarin, which ran on Android and uh, iOS. Uh, this is now all these uh, basically three different boxes and any other boxes if there, if there were any. The only shared functionality that you could have between them had to be a .NET standard library, okay? Now, the runtime and, and uh, the shared class library th that can be shared between all three of these different environments lives under .NET, right? So it's one runtime, it's uh, one engine that is essentially executing the codes for all of, uh, all, all of these, right? So... I mean, again, just kind of repeating these two bullet points will just make it a little bit clear. If you target .NET 5, this is the target framework. It basically just replace, uh, combines your uh, .NET Core app and .NET standard. And now you have that sort of single point of truth. If you're then going towards development on Windows, Android, or iOS, or any other platform, if you want to use specific APIs for those platforms, so for example, like uh, showing a notification on screen, uh, that's going to look different for Android, it's going to look different for iOS, and it's going to look different for Windows. So then you opt in into one of these options where it would give you those additional APIs, but internally, again, it just uses .NET 5 as well, okay? So that's just quickly understanding what this whole unification bit is about. Uh, the other bits that we're going to take a look at is, first of all, one of the biggest features in .NET 5 is C Sharp 9. We're going to have a separate video for that. Today, we're going to take a look at specifically ASP.NET Core. And there is really not that much to say. Mainly, it is the system.txt.json serialization changes, which will or can change how you write code and how you think about stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at the HTTP client features. Specifically, I already covered the system.txt.json extensions for the HTTP client in my other video where I showed how to use a IHTTP client factory and ASP.NET Core applications. Uh, this is again where I said there uh, in that video where this feature is going to be the thing that we're going to be using going forward because they were making, they recruited uh, the guy who made Newton Soft uh, JSON, which is also like his name, whatever. They got him into Microsoft to help him build system.txt.json. And I mean, here it is. It's uh, more or less reaching its uh, mature form. Uh, what we got here is a record, which is just a uh, class as well. It just has two properties, which is a full name and an integer age, right? And what we want to do is we want to perform a get request and deserialize the result from JSON into a C Sharp object. You get these extension functions coming from the system.net.http.json namespace, and you just say, where do you want to get from? What do you get? You get the person in the end. Real simple, right? No more uh, reading content, uh, bringing in JSON serializer to deserialize it. All good, right? Same with same thing with post. Just put your object in there, automatically serializes it, sends it. You get the response, read the JSON response from content. Uh, you got your response, right? Super easy, uh, couldn't get, uh, could, couldn't ask for more really. This is now built in into ASP.NET Core. And uh, again, uh, f further features that we're gonna be looking at, again, it's all gonna be just system.txt.json. So first thing, uh, a lot of people in my uh, shop tutorial when they upgraded from uh, ASP.NET Core 2 to 3 and 3.1, the primary breaking change that they had is when they were sending in the value for the product. So like how much does a product cost? In JavaScript with Newtonsoft and .NET Core 2, it would basically take the number that's contained in the string and just be able to deserialize it to a number. This didn't work in uh, uh, the system.txt.json uh, 4.7.2 in ASP.NET Core 3.1, right? So now 
we basically, again, we have a class with a, a key and a value of integer. We are going to supply it a JSON, which has a value of a string that contains the number five. Simple things, but you essentially no longer have to do any handling on your front end to not to make sure any numbers that you send aren't strings and making sure that they're numbers. Uh, that stuff just gets deserialized. So just for full effect, this is what would happen previously. It would tell you cannot convert uh, whatever to integer and you're good. So th this bit here is I'm running it on three on .NET Core 3.1 and I'm using the system.txt.json library for 0.7.2, right? This is .NET 5 where it just works and I have it referencing my DLLs for this application where I built, right? So uh, the other bit, I also think this is quite a big change. Uh, I think it's gonna impact me the most out of uh, all of these because I have had to many times uh, create view models and I had to, uh, or either cast objects to anonymous objects just in order to avoid this issue where there would be a circular reference, right? So just to kind of give this effect, I have an owner that has a dog, right? What I called? I then have a dog that has an owner. I create the dog. I create the owner with the dog and I put the owner in the dog, right? So the dog has the owner, the owner has the dog and the dog has the, it's a circular reference essentially. Now what you do is you specify an option that says reference handler preserve, okay? And uh, what will happen is when you run this code, it's not going to throw an exception it will give you basically reference IDs, okay? So, I mean, the owner has ID one, dog has ID two, dog has an owner with a reference ID one, right? So in your JavaScript, uh, it, it's probably gonna look a little bit different. You're probably not gonna be using these references all that much. You can sanitize them, what not, uh, but this is what happens now, okay? Previously, if we take a look at how the circular references would work, um, in what's it called? In the previous version, uh, it would just say impossible possible object cycle. You know, you might have a, a circular reference or something. So, you know how you have uh, many to many relationships, and then as soon as you get the many to many relationship from entity framework, it just goes ahead and throws this error, and then you're like, oh, okay, I gotta go put a view model in there when you didn't necessarily need it. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be a lot better now. Uh, the last bit I think it's important to mention, uh, I, I'm probably not going to use this option all too much, but you can now, now that we're essentially able to deserialize strings to numbers and uh, you can also have a full-fledged uh, type key support on the dictionary. So it's going to go something like this. You're going to deserialize the one in hello world. One's going to get put in the key dictionary. And all is good, right? Previously, what would happen is boom. And now we do, we do not support this, right? Now it's support. Uh, the other important thing to know is just the JSON serialization options. You get a default of JSON serializer web. So let's take a look at this real quick. This is your default options in the web world. Uh, I mean, that's where I live. And uh, property name case insensitive, true. That's what it says, number handling. Allow read from strings. What more could you ask for? Well, maybe a little bit of JSON camel casing name policy, right? So you have camel casing on your JavaScript side, you send it to the backend and it has no problem to transfer it to your Pascal case or whatever, a capital case uh, style that you use in C sharp, right? So that's pretty much for those features. The last bit that we're gonna go over are some helper attributes. So First of all is having immutable structures or structs where you basically have a property that doesn't have a setter that makes it immutable. So once we create it, can't change it. And uh, you specify a JSON constructor, system.txt.json finds it, finds the appropriate property, put it in here, and now it knows how to create your immutable struct, right? So before it would try to create the type and set it, uh, it, can't, it won't be able, it's not going to be taking that route this time. Now you have to do it this way. Uh, the other bit is basically being able to interact with private setters, private getters. So if you would try to deserialize with a private setter, you would get a, 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 a no, nada. Now you put JSON include, 
it works, right? So that's for deserialization. If you want to serialize with a getter being private before, guess what? Nope. Uh, now you JSON include, all good, right? I didn't mean that to rhyme, but you know, you know how we roll. Uh, anyway, JSON include on the property. Again, this is something that you can include in your options as well. And I mean, JSON include on your field. So if you want to include your fields in deserialization and serialization, JSON include, basically JSON include, and it's going to include it. Okay. The last bit also could be useful. Uh, you have your regular property. I mean, it's just serialized, deserialized. You have your JSON ignore, just going to ignore it. If you have a condition to always ignore and just same as a uh, JSON ignore, I'm not, I'm not sure why they put it there. Again, condition never ignore. I'm not entirely sure for the use case of this. I mean, for me, it would be the same as not having this thing, but it, clearly there must be a difference. And the last two could be quite useful. So when writing default, that basically means if you have an object here and you have some kind of a different default value for the object. So if you have like a dog and instead of a null value, the default will be like an empty dog or something like that. Uh, if it recognizes that as a default value, it's going to emit it from uh, serialization and deserialization. And the uh, same thing for the null. So if a value is null, it's just going to ignore it, right? So these are just some rules that you can have, right? So, uh, not too much changes for the ASP.NET Core world. As I said, I think primarily it's going to be on the entity framework side, the more exciting changes and uh, the C sharp changes, which really are going to change a little bit of how we write code, how we interact with the applications. And uh, I mean, how many times have you tried to spin up a or lightweight, like mock dev server, whatever, to just quickly do some things, right? So. Now you don't need to go and just start a video. You just put it all in one file and just scroll through here and just like, you know, edit your stuff. So top level statements, uh, get a, it's basically a, a slowly going to turn into a link pad script. This will be it for this episode. Watch out for my C sharp nine and uh, dot net uh, of what's called entity framework five uh, overviews. If they're not out when this video is out, I'm going to add the, the links to the descriptions and annotations over here on screen as well. Nevertheless, uh, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, share, uh, whatever. If you have any questions, ask them in the comment section or come ask them on my Discord server. I also stream on Twitch Wednesdays and Sundays. Come ahead and join for that. And hopefully I'll see you in my other videos.